Hey, it's Robert Taylor, and it's Friday, June 11th, and here's this week's eBlast updates. Important news, starting this Sunday, that's right, today's 11th, Saturday 12th, 13th, starting Sunday the 13th of June, uh, we are not going to require any registration for our services. So that means at the 8.30 service, you can just come, bring your chair, bring your iced coffee, uh, cold tea, lemonade, bring a sandwich, you know, and you know, bring your stuff, and bring your family and come and be out. We're repositioning things. We're trying to get a little more shade. Uh, it was pretty hot last week, but we did okay. If we move the service super early for more shade, then we lose people because it's so early. So for now, 8.30, come. Uh, no masks required at the 8.30 service and no registration. How about that? But that's not all. At the 9.45 service, we are not requiring you to sign up for seats. There are no pre-arranged seats. You can just drive up at uh, 9.39 uh, or 9.40, make your way into the church. Uh, we are still asking you to wear masks at the service for a variety of reasons, which you, know, you should know by now, but we're changing things incrementally. So this week, we are not requiring signups. We're not limiting the service to uh, 32 people and we're not requiring you um, to do anything, but just to come and to worship. This week was, was with masks. Uh, we will continue to be using some live music and some recorded music, but we're, we're making our way back. Um, children, so for the outdoor service and for, you know, where we actually have our kids uh, program going on at 8.30, we're not requiring masks. Parents uh, and anybody who wants to wear a mask is encouraged to wear a mask. If you feel like you'd like to wear a mask, you should wear a mask. We're doing this on the basis of all what the epidemiologists are saying, both uh, in, the, in the CDC and, and for um, kids you know, here in the area. And so if you'd like to wear a mask, you are certainly welcome to wear a mask, but we are not requiring you to wear a mask. The basis, of course, is vaccinations. We are not gonna card you at the door. There's not gonna be a guy who puts a stamp on your hand if you're not vaccinated. Uh, vaccines are right now, in terms of the science, what makes us able to do this. So we're saying, just like at the grocery store or any place of business, that the CDC does not require you to wear masks if you have been vaccinated. So um, this is a choice that you will have to make. We are not telling you what to do. We're telling you what we are able to do. And so you'll have to make a choice within that uh, spectrum. For some of us, it feels like wild and crazy because we've been being so been so careful for more than a year. Uh, but now we're going to go ahead and continue to be careful, but we're not gonna require you to sign up and we're not for either service. The reason we signed up for the outdoor service is we used to prepare communion for each person in advance. From now on, uh, at least in this part of the transition, we will be doing communion in one kind, that is to say the bread, and you'll come forward in family groups to receive communion, just like we did last week at both services with the bishop. At the 945, same thing. We will still be doing communion, uh, I will wear a mask when we prepare, as I prepare the communion, uh, but I will not be wearing a mask for the duration. So just letting you know, the bishop wore a mask and then he gave it to you uh, with the mask. Um, I'm still thinking through all the pieces, but because it's also streamed, they have a mysterious masked guy. You know, that's one of the things we're going to have to weigh. So anyway, but the main thing is, call your friends who have you haven't seen for a while, and say hey, we can go back to church and we don't have to sign up. Give them a call. Call somebody. Make at least one phone call uh, to somebody to let them know. Uh, to let them know that they, that, and because it's that phone call more than the e-blast that will help people uh, get, get the news, okay? Last week, we had our uh, fill the truck and fill the truck by asking a friend to help. Uh, that was last week. There were more than 66 boxes of food. So people come and bring cans. Uh, Marta and, and, and Ray put, found that they had 66 you know, medium-sized boxes of food 
And there were like hundreds of dollars in checks and we donated the money that had been raised at the pumpkin patch that all got sent to the, um, to the food pantry. So they, those guys got a real blessing. And particularly if you've given, of course, you know, Jesus said it's better to give than to receive. But if you invited somebody, they got the blessing too. So great weekend uh, about that. The bishop stayed last week. And uh, the, the one focus that we talked about was the issue of racism and what, where does the church, what role does the church play in that? So we did a lot of the work on the history of uh, racism in America and some of the issues that we continue to uh, deal with. And uh, you, what I want to bring out about racism is, is I, I think of everything, not from a political standpoint. I mean, I'm certainly aware, I'm a political science major, you know, my favorite class, constitutional law, you know, I, I, that's my orientation. I read stuff about um, the political and social history of America, it's something I do on the side. So it's a great interest to me. Plus I'm an American citizen. But before I'm an American citizen, and as an American citizen, citizen and forever, I'm a disciple of Jesus. And so I have to make the, the, the main influence in my life in terms of the way I see the world is what has Jesus taught and how is Jesus leading? And so uh, my main source of influence I must make is not a which news feed do I have or which politician do I have or which pundit. Uh, there, there might be some interesting theories and some interesting stuff. I'm not trying to say they're all bad people. What I'm trying to say as a disciple, I've signed, my, my life has already been signed up and signed away for Jesus. And racism, the, at the base of racism is not politics, but the base of racism is the brokenness of sin. And so I have to look at it from a sin standpoint. And so there's sometimes there's repentance that needs to go on. And there's certainly the work that goes on because we signed on in our baptismal covenant uh, to see every person uh, as their, their value in Christ, and to respect the dignity of all people is, is the, actual frame, uh, the actual phrase, and, and about justice. So I'm about that, but I do it from the standpoint, starting with, going with, and ending with, what does Jesus say about this and what am I called to do? So anyway, so that's what the, uh, the bishop and our vestry, we talked about that for you know, an hour and a half uh, after church service. We have some things coming up also. I don't want to under to to somehow talk about we're having some nights where we're going to be reacquainted with the Holy Spirit, like that's some sort of add-on. Like, hey, we're also going to make shawls, and uh, we're going to, um, you know, have something else, which is a nice thing. Our lives today, our faith is in Christ, but the interplay and the action of God in our life is our connection with the Holy Spirit not on Sundays, but every day. And so we've been away from church for nearly, you know, a year and a half, not quite. But, you know, we really need to kind of get back to remembering who are we in Christ and where is the Holy Spirit speaking to us and how is the Spirit leading us? Because that's ultimately what gets us back into our purpose, which is about Jesus's mission. It also, the Holy Spirit is also the one that brings to mind our, we'll call it our pastoral role, how do we love one another? Because Jesus took all the disciples. He didn't take them away and they went occasionally on a mission. The whole thing was the mission. But on the mission, they still had to care for one another and love one another. So it isn't like loving one another and the pastoral role of our fellowship is separate from the mission. It's all of us on the mission. How does all that happen? How are we inspired? How are we led? How are we empowered? How do we are healed by the Holy Spirit? Some of you remember this, like, oh, I remember it when that was more uh, apparent in my life where I was more aware of that. It's time for us. God is giving us this gift to become reacquainted with the Holy Spirit. So right now, I've got a guy who leads retreats on the Holy Spirit. Um, and uh, it's a friend of mine. It's a guy who I know pretty well. I've never been to his Holy Spirit retreat but this is gonna be a great opportunity. I'm trying to figure out how can this work for most people? To be reacquainted with the Holy Spirit is not like a one-time thing, like, oh, I did that seminar back in 97. 
now it's an ongoing piece that we probably need to be connected to right now. So you'll be hearing, I think we're gonna have like a whole Saturday morning, like a retreat, like, you know, from 8.30 to noon. And I think I'm trying to see if we can do some evenings where we gather together just to become reacquainted with the Holy Spirit. When I say coming together and gathering, I'm thinking 10 people, not like 100 people, but 10 at a time in an ongoing way. So I want you to think about that. Like where, after a year and, and uh, you know, a year and a quarter of being apart from my active uh, role in church, you know, where do I see the spirit and what might God be calling me to? You know, how is God calling me just back to life? So that's coming up. You're going to hear some more about that soon. Uh, coming up, we also uh, are, we're having more of our outdoor just kind of get together and worship. Uh, coming up on the 23rd, we have a, a contemporary version of what the, uh, uh, the choir did a week or so ago. Uh, so we have these activities are all beginning to come back. So I'm just encouraging you to find something and make a reason for yourself to get together with people. It doesn't have to be the perfect thing. It just has to be, you, we got to get back together. So we're inviting you back in, in every possible way that we can do that. How about that for a sloppy sentence, but I think you get the message. So remember, you don't have to sign up this week. Just come to the service, see one another. If you're in the outdoor service, I highly encourage you bringing you know, a snack and, uh, and uh, an iced coffee. I'm thinking of myself right now, but that's probably about it. You know, bring something like that, enjoy yourself. It's such a beautiful time. I'm telling you, the core of the people that meet outside, they don't want to go back in. They just love being outside. Uh, and if you haven't experienced that, you're like, why would they like that? Come and see. So that's 8.30. And at 945, we have our live stream. Um, if, if you want to, um, uh, there's a link still if you need to see this from home, because we see people who are not even local, but, it, but we still have the link so that you can watch this on Facebook and Zoom. Um, but, uh, but we're coming back live. Final thought, as we come back live, you, you realize we're gonna need a lot more help putting on the services that we're doing uh, because we're still gonna have our streaming component, which involves a minimum of three people just to run that. And we're gonna have our live version, which is gonna means ushers and people greeting and connecting for that. So we need lots of help. Don't make it a big deal. Just say, hey, I'm willing to help out from time to time. Come on in, pitch in and we're gonna rebuild our community and find the life of God by the Holy Spirit, an exceptional uh, way to live. So God bless you. I hope you'll I'll see you this weekend and uh, enjoy this great weather and um, God bless you. <laughs>